On today's episode of That Mental Ginger Show, we are talking to podcaster, author, and inspirational speaker, Chris D.T. Gordon. You've all watched my intro, as you know, I will normally give like a wee bit of a, a positive praise towards my guest, and then we would sit and I would say, oh, let's cut to the intro. I think you can tell from the smell on my face for this one, I thoroughly enjoyed this chat with Chris. He has such a brilliant story to tell, and I want to just get right into it. So let's cut to the intro, and I hope you all enjoy it. All right, troops. Chris, my friend, at long last we meet. It is one of the, the greatest crossover events of all time. Forget your Marvels, forget your DCs, your multiverses. We finally got you on the podcast. How you doing, my friend? Oh, man, we are the Chrome Dome Gingers, I tell you. <laughs> yes. The CDGs. Oh, I'm doing fantastically well. And that's actually my, my initials, by the way, too. Yes. So I, do have, I do have two middle names, so uh, mm. we'll, we, we'll leave that alone for another time. I'm doing fantastic, Andrew. Thanks for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. And yes, it is a long time coming. Yeah, definitely, my friend. I've been keeping an eye from the sidelines. You know, just using, doing my usual what they call it market research. I just call it stalking. But, you know, I mean, you know what? No point it's, lying. It is what it is. Yeah, definitely. There's no <laughs> point lying about it. What that's that's basically what the internet is made for these days. It's just stalking everything. Oh yeah, and you know, it's kind of funny. Uh, sometimes on Facebook they'll have a, a meme that says "badly describe your job," mm -hmm. and I would say mine is stalking legally stalking children online <laughs> because if kids don't show up to my online classroom i have to look for them <laughs> you know have they, have they pulled any pranks yet where they've just done like the fake screen freeze or just put something up and uh, just pretended they're not there you know once in a while i have students i work with students with disabilities so mm. sometimes the disability comes into play but more than once, I have had to call the parent and say, hey, so-and-so is having a hard time engaging with me. Can you help him out? <laughs> and then they find their way on, and they're not too happy. But mm. I have a job to do. Yeah, definitely. Like, you're molding the minds of the young. What, uh, what is, that's something I can barely do with the kids that I've got like, in my house. <laughs> well, or anything else. Right, so it's a credit to you. Well, so that leads us in perfectly to discussing your origin story, my friend, because if there's one thing we all have in common, we all have an origins. So that is true. Chris, so Chris, for my faithful followers, please tell us your origin story. Yes, sir. And I love that you use that term, Andrew, because I use that term during my speaking presentations. As you could probably see above and behind me, mm. I am flanked by geekness and comic book characters i have the ninja turtles and deadpool on my right i have yep. weird al yankovic on my left hey. i have transformers lining my wall on my left side mm. and i am all about the origin story and as you said mm -hmm. we all have one the thing that people confuse though or get, get, get confused with is that they think origin stories are where the powers are created mm. and that's where that's where a little mistake is made because peter parker received his uh his powers from a spider bite mm -hmm. but that's not what he, what made him spider-man nope. it was that great line we heard we have heard all throughout our childhoods with mm -hmm. great power comes great responsibility and it's slightly changed from the comics but it's true mm -hmm. The fact that he had to face his mistake and it led to the death of Uncle Ben, mm -hmm. in most instances, I won't spoil anything for anyone, yep. is mm -hmm. what has led to him choosing to become Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. In another instance, Batman doesn't have any superpowers, mm -hmm. but he we all know his origin story and what forced him to gain all those years of training and studying to don the cape and cowl. Mm -hmm. So... My origin story starts seven years ago. I live in Minnesota, which is in the Midwest of the United States. I have a wonderful wife named Becky, 
three fantastic kids, Josh, Seth, and Anna. Seth and Anna are 10-year-old twins. At the time of my origin story, though, they were two, and Josh was six. Really? I was helping Becky get the kids ready for school because she taught at an on-site school, a brick-and-mortar school, we call it, in New Orleans, Minnesota here. Mm-hmm. I teach online, so I taught from home. But I would help her out because I'm a, I'm a good husband like that. So yeah. I... I picked up my younger son, Seth, one of the twins, and decided to have a little fun and fly him to our detached garage. Mm. Well, I veered too far to the right and scratched the back of my right hand on my garage wall. Thanks. Looking at it, didn't bleed. And to quote one of my favorite movies of all time, Tis but a scratch. Hey. I thought you'd like, I appreciate that. (laughs) Yes, definitely, my friend. So I put him into the car seat. I kissed them all goodbye. And as they went on their way, I went on my way back into the house to wash off my hand and start my day of online teaching. Three days go by. Nothing wrong. Right? No, just nothing out of the ordinary until Saturday when I wake up to find a lacrosse ball sized bump on my right elbow. I go to the urgent care clinic here in town. The doctor looks at it and says, well, it might be bursitis, which is an inflammation of a bursa sac, but keep an eye on it and let us know if anything happens. So I go home and I keep an eye on it as the bump grew and grew and grew until my right arm was three times the size of my left. Wow. In comic book parlance, I was the Incredible Hulk in mid-transformation. Yeah. (laughs) But instead of being angry and smashy, I was more sicky and tiredy. Mm. Well, by the time that we uh, realized, okay, this is not going away, we found a babysitter for the kids, and Becky drove me to the emergency room, and they quickly admitted me because, hello, huge right arm. Yeah. And as they're taking my vitals, they find out something else is wrong. I had gone septic. Oh. And for those who don't know, sepsis is a reaction that the body has to a foreign agent. And one of the the reactions, the types of reactions, is that the body pumps a chemical into the bloodstream to fight off said agent. Mm -hmm. However, sepsis alone can kill you. Yeah. So I had poison coursing through my veins, and a ginormous right appendage. Yeah. Admittedly, not the craziest Saturday night I ever experienced, but easily top five. Mm. I would say so, yeah. Yeah, you know, uh, we won't talk about the others. That's for a whole other podcast. Well, I have so, two that we could definitely dive into on those ones. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so uh, they keep me over overnight for observation. And the next morning, that attending doctor walks up to my hospital bed and says something I will never forget. She says, Mr. Gordon, this is beyond us. We can do nothing more for you here. Where do you want to go? And I quickly say Mayo, as in the Mayo Clinic, which is world-renowned. Everyone knows the Mayo Clinic. Saudi Arabian princes come to the Mayo Clinic. Mm. So it is, it's like the Beyonce or Cher of hospitals. You say Mayo, mm-hmm. people know, generally know what you're talking about. Mm. And that was in Rochester, Minnesota, which is about two hours east of us. Mm. The other reason I said Mayo was because Becky's parents live in Rochester. So I knew that Becky, the kids, and Max the dog would have a place to stay for the, I was sure, two or three days this would mm. take to resolve itself, Max, because, you know, of my expert medical, you know, background. Mm. So they fly me to Rochester, and that's where they diagnose me with necrotizing fasciitis. Oh, I also have known as flesh eating bacteria. Yeah. Yes. Thank you, Scrubs, for me knowing what that is. <laughs> yes. Yes. Mm. Uh, And so once they knew what they were dealing with, they quickly prepped me for surgery and put me out for five days. During that five-day time, they 
remove the infected skin from the back of my right hand all the way through my arm, shoulder, to the base of my neck, down through my chest, even taking off a nipple, around my rib cage and up through my back. Wow. When, uh, when they removed all the skin, though, they mm. discovered that the infection had gone so far into my right arm that they were near certain, if not 100%, that they would have to amputate my arm. Wow. Be it could, because it had gone so far in. However, mm. when they were prepping for surgery, the occupational therapist in attendance saw they still had hand function. Mm. So what they did was they removed a 40 centimeter by 10 centimeter flap of skin from my left thigh and oh. place it on my right hand and forearm. Yes. Yeah. There. Yeah. Yep. And so wow. since this is my thigh on my hand, yeah. I call this my fan. <laughs> Copyright pending. Yes, definitely. However, and I'm not sure if this story is popular in the UK Andrew, but this is where my tale turns into a bit of the when you give a mouse a cookie story. You know mm. how when you solve one problem, another problem presents itself? Yeah, yeah. So, sure, my arm is saved, but now I have a gaping hole in my left leg. Yeah. So they elect to, and they couldn't close it naturally. There's no way this thing is going to close on its own. Yeah. And I'm a runner, and I, and I, I used to play – European football when mm. I was younger. So I had pretty big thighs. Yeah. They elected to remove my vastus lateralis, which is my outermost quadricep muscle. Yeah. So instead of having a quad, I now have a tri. Wow. They then installed a shoestring type contraption called a Jacob's ladder on the inside of the wound. And then they put a knob on either side on the outside of the wound. Wow. So they can tighten the wound over time. So your legs kind of like a tap? Like um, a faucet? No, just like, just like, uh, a, yeah, like a faucet tap. Yeah. Yeah. So they would tight, tighten those knobs over time to close the wound. Wow. So I'm looking like de a discount Deadpool <laughs> or a zombie in progress up top. <laughs> Frankenstein's monster underneath. I'm, I am my wow. own horror, horror movie mishmash. Oh wow! What we so got to get you in like some sort of like horror franchise, my friend. You won't. Yeah, exactly. You'll, you'll soar like, like uh, Roger England. will be like, right? I've just found uh, my replacement. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think uh, I should talk to him. Yeah, about that because I definitely have a Freddy going on mm. on the uh, right side here. Either that, or I could, uh, you know, I, I could stunt double as Ryan Reynolds. I might oh, need, I might need like yeah. eight inch lifts though because I'm rather shorter <laughs> than he is. <laughs> So, um, sorry, my uh, phone is ringing. I have a the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles theme song as my ringtone. Hey, Again, that, that, geek. Exactly. Like, it's, it's okay. Well, I have I have tiered the system of geek, dork, and nerd. Well, we, we will discuss that at a later date. That'll Sounds be a good. good. That'll be yeah. a good conversation. So let's carry on with your story, my friend, because I'm I'm utterly fascinated by it. Yeah, so, so now they saved my leg, I still have all kinds of skills former skin area that are now open to festers and you know open to, to uh, infections and stuff so they have to take a skin graft harvester or as i like to call it a cheese slicer on steroids wow and run it up and down my back and my thighs so they can put skin grafts on those areas wow and i could walk around not looking like the invisible man all all bandaged up yeah again a monster movie reference so hey, it could have been worse. That, you could have been like kevin bacon you could have been hollow man there you go the, the, mm. although people do say i i have that going on up here <laughs> so after that five day span of a, of a coma i mm. wake up and i met by someone i was not expecting at all my brother, Jeff, who flew in from Michigan, the state that looks like a mitten, yeah, where we both grew up, as soon as Becky told him what was going on with me five days prior, 
He found the first flight from Grand Rapids, Michigan, flew to the Twin Cities in Minnesota, and then mm -hmm. found a shuttle to come down. He quickly called Becky and Bill, my dad-in-law. They mm -hmm. came to the hospital and started filling me in on what was going on. And then they left for the night. And that's where a different kind of bacteria infected my body, Andrew. I was rid of the flesh-eating bacteria. But now I had to face personal bacteria. Mm. Those negative thoughts that challenge us when we're faced with life-threatening or life-changing events. Mm -hmm. They came in the form of questions to which I had no answers. What was my body going to be able to do when I fully recovered? If I fully recovered. Mm. What was my mindset going to be like? How was I going to relate? to Becky, the kids, other family members and friends, my colleagues, or my neighbors, total strangers, in fact. Mm. How was I going to deal with this financially? Because yes, we had good insurance, but as it turned out, I was now the proud owner of a million dollar arm. Wow. And so all of these questions were starting to fester in my mind and I had no answers. Mm -hmm. And that's where I started to feel that the truth of the phrase, where your thoughts go, your mind and body will follow, mm. really rang true. Because I had, again, all questions, zero answers. And I was, I was dragged through the coals, you know, put through the ringer, any kind of idiom you want to use. I got mm. my butt handed to me. Mm. Thankfully, though, that personal bacteria didn't have time to fester. In one of her early uh, hospital visits, Becky stopped by my room and she started telling me about how people were stepping up for us. Our neighbors here in New Ulm were shoveling our driveway, snow blowing our walkways, mm -hmm. and keeping an eye on the house. People in Rochester, even some of my online colleagues, were stopping by Bill and Dee's house to check on the family, play with the kids, donate toys and clothing to the kids because it turned out they weren't in Rochester for two or three days. They were there for two weeks and they had barely nothing of their own. Yeah. People were starting GoFundMe accounts to help offset the lost wages I incurred from my hospitalization because I ran out of sick days really early mm -hmm. in my hospital stay. And it was just gift after donation, after kind act that Becky was telling me about. And I could feel, almost physically feel, that personal bacteria wash away. And I was left with what I now call the attitude of gratitude or tag for mm -hmm. short. And instead of having questions I couldn't answer, I now ask myself questions that I could actually easily answer. Mm -hmm. The first one being, what was I grateful for? And when we ask ourselves that question, I'm going to ask you this question, Andrew. When you think about what you're thankful for, or grateful for, what comes to mind? My family, my instant yep. life, my, my kids, my wife, but um, my just just being alive, might be able to take a breath every day. Exactly, mm. and and that's what I said. But then I thought, you know, I wonder what else I could be thankful for. So I started looking at all the small, seemingly insignificant parts of my life that I could be thankful for, or you know, they just think about, hey, this makes me smile. For instance, the first season of the Netflix show Daredevil hey. had just premiered when I was asking myself this question, and you know the show. Yes, I do. I, I, must, have, oh, I must have rewound and played that hallway fight scene over mm -hmm. two dozen times. Definitely. Yeah, and oh, so man. I thought about, wow, I really appreciate this show helping me as I you know, take my mind off of my recovery because mm. I couldn't go anywhere for days on end. I was yeah. you know, confi confined to my hospital bed. And speaking of that confinement, I was thankful 
that I didn't have to ask someone to close the blinds on my window when mm -hmm. the sun was shining. And I know, I know that sounds ra random and odd, but when you are confined to a singular spot for days on end mm -hmm. and you have to be reliant on everyone to do things for you, not having to ask someone for one more thing is actually a blessing. Mm -hmm. And then there's the hospital pizza. And I, I don't know your experience with hospital food, Andrew. Mm -hmm. Well, thankfully, uh, touch wood, uh, I've not been admitted. Well, um, I did work uh, in our health service for eight years. That's a, okay. long a long story for another day. But yeah, we never had hospital pizza. I really wish I did because I am basically, that's my qualification to be that Ninja Turtle right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, Mikey would have loved being a patient at my hospital because it was mm. phenomenal. Yeah. It was one of those personal pizzas, deep dish. Oh, oh man. wow. It, and I'm, I'm willing to concede that maybe it was because I hadn't had pizza for a month when mm. I finally had it. But man, I just remember it being so good. Yeah. And so I, I do this to this day. I ask my students this and I ask myself this. What right now am I thankful for? Mm. And I think about the hinges of my door. Mm. who thinks about door hinges right mm. well if you happen to be stuck outside a certain room where you have to do a certain bit of business mm -hmm. and that door is an opening and you're doing the number one shuffle <laughs> you really want that door to open and when it finally does you are thankful for everything that helps that door work especially the door hinges yep uh, when think, you have kids you're very thankful for the lock on that door <laughs> yes, yes, indeed. I'm also thankful for my my computer mouse. As you can see, it's beat up. It's held together mm -hmm. by duct tape. But it's still it's going. Been, it's been with me for a while, though. But I think mm -hmm. about, you know what? This is a little a symbolic of me. Beat mm -hmm. up, held together by foreign objects, but still does the job. <laughs> yeah. And then I think about my right armpit, as everyone does. Of course. Well, I mean, yes. I'm, a I'm a lefty. I have to think about my left armpit more, but yeah. Yeah, I'm a righty. Yeah, there so, we go. But I'm thankful for my right armpit because remember, Andrew, my right side is covered in skin grafts. Mm -hmm. Skin grafts are non-porous, mm. which means they don't sweat, which means I can make a sticky of deodorant last for six months. Wow. <laughs> I know, right? I can see the green come up in your face. You are so jealous. Yes, definitely. Well, I can just, yeah. uh, well, especially being like, well, you know, the redheads, we sweat like mofos. Well, <laughs> anything, anything that can pro, uh, prolong what my, my not perspiring is amazing. Well, I would, yes. that would, well, I just skin graft my entire body so I don't sweat when I go on honeymoon. My wife would be so happy. <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm sure she would, she would love the, uh, you know, the whole Deadpool look that mm. you would uh, have. And, you know, the thing is also is I'm a much better polar plunger. Mm. You know, when people jump in really cold water for, yeah. going, you know, for charities and stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm awesome at that. Nice. Uh, so, so it's those little things, those seemingly insignificant parts of my life that I say, you know what? I'm thankful for this when I don't need it. Mm. And so I ask everyone, look around you. Try to pick out as many things as you can that you are happy that you own. Like I have this, I have this cowbell. Hey. Sometimes you got a fever, right? Yeah. You know, and I'm thankful for my transformers I have on my shelf. I'm thankful for this light that helps you see me. I'm thankful for the carpet on my floor. Mm. The more you can pick out things that you are thankful that are in your life the richer you actually feel mm. and you don't worry so much about things that you don't have. And so that was the first question I asked myself, what do you, what are good things that you have in your life? The big things and the small things. Mm. And then I thought about who is good in my life, who, you know, I started to acknowledge the appreciated. And of course, when we ask ourselves, who do we, who are we thankful in our lives? Again, the big groups come up, our family, our friends, people who share our faith, our neighbors, our colleagues. For me, though, in the hospital, 
it was definitely the nursing staff. Mm-hmm. I love the doctors. I love the other, you know, the other professionals at the, the hospital. But the nursing staff not only gave me professional assistance, but many of them actually became my friends. And I cherish that friendship. Well, a story I would like to tell is when you are in the hospital for an extended, extended period of time, they sometimes put a poster on one of your walls. Mm. And I call it the getting to know you poster because it's used to, spoiler alert, get to know you. Mm. I know, crazy. Yeah. One of the questions they asked was favorite movie. Now, Andrew, you've heard me quote Money Python. Mm-hmm. I have the Ninja Turtles and Deadpool behind me. Mm-hmm. And you know, I love my Star Wars. Yes, yes. So you could probably guess what my favorite movie is. Uh, I would say Empire Strikes Back. That's a close second. Which is a close one. Blazing Saddles. Yes. So, because I was thinking, what's a movie I can watch over and over again and not get sick of? Mm. Right there. So, I had them put Blazing Saddles on the poster. A couple weeks later, I'm lying in my bed. A, A doctor is in there giving me an update. The head nurse, Chris, practically runs into my room. She's so excited for some reason. She said, Chris, I was at a garage sale this past weekend, and I saw this. It reminded me of you, and here it is. She handed me a DVD copy of Blazing Saddles. Oh, lovely. I already own the movie. Yeah. I'm a, I'm a, an item on her to-do list. I am just a part of her job. Mm. But the fact that she thought of me so much that she not only recognized that that was my favorite movie, but she bought it for me. Mm-hmm. makes that particular copy of Blazing Saddles one of my prized possessions. Mm-hmm. Not because of the market value, but yeah. because of the love and friendship in which it was given. Definitely. So, you know, I just think about all these great people that are in my life and I, I, I let them know that. I acknowledge them because among other things, if you tell people that you like something that they do, chances are they'll do it again. Mm. So, you know, acknowledge and appreciate it because you don't know if that acknowledgement might help them out in their day as well. Mm-hmm. And that, that, that actually leads me to my third question. How can I give someone else a reason to be grateful? Mm. And in the hospital, I really couldn't do a lot. But once I was discharged, that's when I started taking action. For example, I got back into running. And as I would run down the road, I would pick up trash that was on the road or on the sidewalk or in someone's yard without being too trespassy. Mm. And I, then I would also mow my uh, neighbor's lawns or snow blow their driveway or walkway when they needed it. I'm usually one of the first ones up on the block. So mm-hmm. I get the snowblower out and uh, do uh, everyone's walkway on my side of the block. And if I knew someone, someone wasn't going to be home for an extended, extended period of time, I would snowblow their driveway as well. And then there's the classic holding a door open for someone. Yes. And I know this one gets overlooked and it's cliche. Mm. But if there's nothing else that COVID has taught us, Andrew, is that at any moment, someone could be facing the hardest day of their life. Mm -hmm. Maybe they lost a loved one. Maybe they lost their job. We don't know what's going on in people's lives unless they tell us. And especially a stranger is not going to divulge that information. Mm -hmm. So if I could hold the door for someone and let them know that in that brief moment, I'm going to stop whatever I'm doing and help them out even in a small way that mm-hmm. maybe that can make their life a little easier and maybe give them something to appreciate. Mm-hmm. Because in that moment, what I'm doing costs me nothing. But to them, it might be priceless. Mm-hmm. So when I started playing tag, 
because I, th I think about the good things in my life. I acknowledge the appreciated and I give others a reason to be grateful. I felt that not only was my gratitude and my positivity increasing, but also my resilience. Hmm. So I started pushing myself. I started to see what could I do in my next chapter of life. So I started running again, like I mentioned. And as of today, I have set or tied four lifetime personal running records in the wow. 5K, the, the 10K, the 10 mile and a half marathon. And right now I'm training to qualify for the Boston Marathon before 2030. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic, man. Well done. Thank you. And I also took up Taekwondo. I was in Taekwondo in middle school and high school, because, mm. but I stopped because I was stupid. Well, my son, Josh, he joined up. Mm. And after a year, I asked him if I could join him. And he said yes. And I am now a first degree black belt in Taekwondo as of wow. this past January. That's amazing. Absolutely brilliant. So if you need any wood broken for some fire, you let me know. Oh, don't worry. If, I, uh, if this ever gets to go to America, I'm calling you as my bodyguard. There we go. There we go. Let's do some uh, Taekwondo fighting. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get you know, someone mad. Yeah. Um, so well, in fairness, we just got a well, we got to figure out what Hong Kong foo style was. There you go. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Maybe dog foo. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Definitely. So, uh, <laughs> and then I also uh, became a professional speaker. Mm. And I, of course, I decided my timing, I decided to take out this endeavor January of 2020. Of course. That's I got the same time exactly with everybody. One, one speaking event before everything closed down. Mm. but i knew i i had to keep going i couldn't quit so i started yeah. my own podcast which is called scar bearers mm. and so i started sharing my story on the air but then i realized i can only do so many episodes about myself yeah and so i started interviewing people like well, we are going to meet next week and i'm going to talk with you they're going to share yeah. your awesome story with me yes and i look forward I've, to it yes i've met so many people around the world because of that endeavor and it, it has definitely also increased my speaking prowess to where now i'm speaking at schools and universities i'm actually joining a speaking cohort this summer to help me increase my speaking business so i can maybe even turn this into a full-time endeavor mm. and be able to help people in this way going forward and as much as i love teaching and i and i'm not saying that everyone could be a teacher because not everyone can be a teacher yeah i could not be a teacher like yeah uh, that was i knew that straight away i knew that from <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah but i'm the only one with my story mm -hmm. and i feel that it's my responsibility to share my story the greatest way i can and i i feel speaking and also, I'm writing a book too. Those are the ways I need to pursue to help the world in the best way that I can. Definitely, my friend. And, you know, we are starting to come up on time. And I would normally, let's say, like, you know, get asked the question of if you could give one piece of advice to anybody, but what would that piece of advice be and why? But you have gave so much on this, on this podcast. The main thing that I think we should take away from it is the attitude of gratitude. Well, I think that I think that's the best advice that you could give any one of my listeners and and myself. Something that I'm so grateful for is getting to have this conversation with you, my friend. Well, you're yeah. you're you're so inspiring. What well, your attitude? It just it's such a ray of sunshine. And me being ginger who hates sunshine, that's a massive compliment. I know. But, but <laughs> it, just, it is an affliction. Yes, it really is. Like we, we have to hide. We have to hide the ginger. What? Well, it's not really an uprising because we're getting closer to the sun. We'd have to go down the way. Yeah. But but it just it's ginger. Getting... It's a it's an uh, cowering more or less. A yeah. Cowering. An underground revolution. There we go. There you go. That's how they all <laughs> yeah. start, don't they? Yeah, definitely. Well, I, I stick with going underground. I'm like gingers are like moles. Yeah. That's what we do. I've I've so enjoyed our, our chat, my friend. Like just it's it's really what well, 
I've had a, a, a uh, as most people will know, I've been struggling with some panic attacks lately, uh, and just trying to kind of get myself back into a positive mind frame. This is something I will definitely be looking back to and watching just to remind me of how grateful I am to be getting to speak to people like yourself. So let's use this brief time we have, promote your podcast. Well, obviously I'll do that on my end as well. Tell us where everybody can find you because we need some more Chris Gordon in our lives. Well, thank you, my friend. And first of all, I want to thank you for your kind words. And I'm always helped, always, always here to help your brother. So, you know, whatever I can do to help you, please let me know. Uh, you can find me at chrisdtgordon.com. That's my website. Uh, there you can see what I have to offer as a speaker. You can also find links to my podcast called Scar Bearers. That's the audio podcast. I am on YouTube. On uh, as Chris D T Gordon, you can also find me on Facebook as Chris D T Gordon, Instagram and LinkedIn, all at Chris D T Gordon. You can even Google me, and you can find a bunch of the work I've done, articles I've written. If you just Google Chris D T Gordon, if you go to the website though, you can find a free tag one sheet you can download, and you can find some links to some of my articles and books that I've helped write. Mm. And just connect with me. If you want to, even you can put Chris at ChrisDTGordon.com, email me, reach out. I'd love to chat with you. Yep. Uh, any links that can be provided for my audience, they will be in the description below. Well, and please get in touch with them. Chris, I wish you nothing but success, my friend. Well, uh, keep me updated on how the book is going. Well, we will give that a lot of publicity when it is near completion. Well, I wish you nothing but health and happiness. Well, I look forward to coming on your podcast very soon. Well, until next time, my faithful followers, I've been Andrew Durnan. This has been the brilliant Chris D.T. Gordon. And until next time, take care. Stay safe. Bye-bye.